Now, my first piece of advice is to let Postgres do its thing. So what do I mean by that? So I know with a lot of programmers, they, some of them struggle to the concept of um, declarative versus imperative, meaning they have a hard time telling the database, hey, just give me this data where, where it equals this, because that's what a select statement is. Whereas more imperative is you're saying, I'm going to pull the data, I'm going to do a loop and I'm going to pull the data over one at a time, what I need. Um, so basically what I'm saying is that when you're using the database, use the database, don't try to build around the database because you can get, get yourself into a huge problem if you do something like, hey, let me pull this data from the table and then locally in Ruby, I'm going to filter it, I'm going to sort it. No, 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 let the database do it. So construct your query to filter the data using a where statement, order it on the database, and then pull the, back the data to you. Let the, again, let the database do its thing. And Rails or is very prone to falling into that trap. I, I see that a lot where, it, because Active Record is, it'll create queries for you, but a lot of Rubyists, especially newer ones, get into this habit of just looking at the, the Ruby call, the Ruby code, and not paying attention to the queries that are developed underneath. And I see more and more like N plus one queries and all kinds of stuff where, you know, you could, they're, they're doing loops with a thousand queries when they could just do one query and be done with it. Yeah, yeah. The other thing that it's my, I haven't seen it as prevalent, but it's also a possibility is excessive use of cursors. So again, that's like pulling data and then pulling over it one at a time. Uh, that can, particularly with Oracle, that can be can get really slow. Um, but I haven't seen it that much with Postgres. But again, that's kind of again working around and not letting the database system do its thing. So you want to try to avoid that and actually use properly structured SQL to pull back the data for you. Let it do most of the work. Because the other thing about it is that all of these relational databases systems are predominantly built on C. So that is a very performant language compared to Ruby, compared to Python, which are slower to process things. So you're going to get a speed boost just from that using the native you know, capabilities in your relational database system. So the next area to consider is in terms of indexes. So as a first pass, you basically want to have a primary key on all of your tables. And basically that is an index on whatever your primary key is. It could be a, a surrogate key. Like for example, Rails by default creates a serial, basically an auto incrementing integer for the table when you create it. So that's a good, that's a good practice. The other, you could also go with natural keys. You define a primary key across um, existing actual data rows in your table. So you could do either of those methods, just make sure you have defined a primary key for every table. And the other thing is define an index on any foreign keys on that table. So a foreign key is if you're referencing another table, refer referencing its primary key, like if you are referencing the orders table and you have an order ID and you want to index on that order ID in the table that you're working with. So that's just kind of a baseline you want to make sure you have. And Not sweet lord, make sure your primary key is unique. Well, yeah, that's the point. Uh, yeah, you think that everybody would know that, but they don't. Now now you got me thinking. I was like, wait a minute, does Postgres enforce that if you actually say it's a primary key? I think Postgres does. I think most RDBs do if you call it a primary key. Yeah. But if if you specifically name it in the database a primary key, however... What I have seen is people say, this is my primary key, but they just put an index on an integer. Oh. And that, that's not a primary key. <laughs> so don't, don't do that. Yes, use a, a valid primary key. <laughs> if you like this clip and want to watch another one, you can click right here. 
or if you want to watch the full video, you can click here.